This is Twit. Doug has written in, Do you have any vaccination record app recommendations? In the U.S., we're not likely to get one from the government, but local music venues are now requiring proof of vaccination for entry. That's a good thing. So far, a picture of our CDC card that ties to our state ID is acceptable, but I would rather have some form of application, especially if I could pull it up from the iOS wallet. I've come across several here and I'm a clear member, C-L-E-A-R, so that seems to be the front runner. Uh, And then uh, they included a link to insider.com that has uh, best vaccine passport apps. Um, Yeah, there are some options out there and you can always, I've uh, scanned both sides of my ID as well as keeping it in the bag that I take with me everywhere. So I've got it in multiple forms. Uh, But as we're going to talk about on the show here, um, Rosemary and I, uh, if you want to go with a personalized version uh, Rosemary and I are going to talk about an app called MakePass. With MakePass, you can create your own custom uh, Apple Wallet card. And so I uh, have put together my own custom Apple Wallet card here. And I've, of course, mosaicked out the uh, QR code because it is a smart card QR code. Uh, so it actually has like health record, basic health record information um, that in iOS 15 is actually something you can import into the health app. Uh, so I have my vaccine stuff digitally saved in the health app in one place. I've got my card front and back saved to my Dropbox and to my iCloud drive. And then I've got this, which is available in my wallet app, uh, where I just made it on my own um, using make pass so would you like to tell us about make pass yeah so make pass does a whole bunch of things and you were the one that introduced me to it actually mike i believe it was one of your app caps um and of course uh, i was tidying up my iphone earlier and i offloaded a whole bunch of apps and there it is there it's just reinstalled um so you can go ahead and make a brand new pass um and as you make a pass of course there's a whole bunch of things that you can do but you can also select an icon as a file you could set a barcode including a barcode from a photo which would allow you to pick a specific photo of, say, your vaccine card. Um, And I would suggest that you probably want a generic card type rather than an event pass, uh, event ticket or uh, boarding pass for this because you're going to want it to stand out. Um, And you you won't want a relevant date or location for this, but you can add a whole bunch of information here as well so that everything shows up Um, and you can give it everything that you, you like. So as you go through and add, don't forget, um, that as you, as you type and you've added a field, then you can tap on that preview in the top right. Um, and so if you want to say that it, it's a, a CDC uh, one, then you could do that and, and set that up. Um, but, uh, you know, it, as you go through and set all the information that you, you might want or need, um, then you will uh, hopefully actually end up with a great result of a readable, uh, good-looking mm-hmm. vaccine pass. Um, and uh, don't forget that the logo image is, is going to be a smaller image. It's going to be this barcode that you're going to want to set um, as uh, that information um, as well. Don't forget, though, you can tap, you can type all this information here um, as well. So, for example, first uh, jab, uh, we call them jabs over here. Um, and so I, I don't remember when that was, so I'm just going to guess um, that it was, I don't know, the 9th of March. Um that, that's wrong, but there we go. So I can add first jab and then I can add second uh, jab. And that was uh, on the 31st of July. I remember that much. Uh, there we go. And so now I've got both of those dates right there, uh, which is really useful. Or I could put them down here in the, the pass front fields if I prefer. So I'm just going to type hello and world in there. Oh, I can't spell world. There we go. I'm having a having a day there, Micah, and this this potentially is a bit more useful. Uh, so have a play around with all of those different fields. Um, now, you could potentially use a shortcut to pull up some images every single time. Um, Micah, you talked about this last week, Base64 encoding an image um, to um, to put it in as a shortcut. So actually, oh, what I'm going to do, oh, nice. I, I'm going to take a picture. I've got a really nice fancy keyboard Whoa, here. Um, that is a very cool keyboard. I know. Look at those rainbows, right? As it's going Whoa. Oh Man, I love it. And I'm using some really fancy switches so that they shouldn't be so loud when I type. So I've got a photo here. 
And um, if you want to base64 encode an image so that you can keep it in your shortcut, then what you need to do is you need to start with but getting the picture, right? So you need to select your photo or photos um, and then you'll need the base64 action. Okay, and base64 encode. And then when you've done that, so you select your image and then it encodes it. It might take a while, uh, but that is your image. Wow, that is a lot of data. So what I would actually recommend doing before this, um, actually, I'm just going to change this to uh, get a latest picture because I know it's the last picture I took. Uh, so I'll just pop that in here. Um, and then I'm going to convert my image. Um, now, you might be thinking, Rose, you don't need to convert your image. It's fine. Well, if I convert my image, I can first of all turn off preserve metadata because people don't need to know exactly when and where I took this picture. And I can bring down the quality, which is going to reduce the file size. So now if I get the latest picture and then have a look at this, it's still long, but I, I promise you it's actually smaller. So I'm just going to uh, add that to my clipboard. Um, and then I'm going to always allow that. Perfect. Done. Now I can delete all of these actions. Everything's gone. Okay. So I've got an empty action. I get a text action. I paste in my base 64 encoded image. Wow. That's a big, that's a big text block now, but that's okay. And then I look for that base 64 encode action again. And this time I tap on encode. I swap it to decode and then uh, you can you can do a couple of things. I would suggest, however, for this, uh, what you're going to be looking for is the quick look action. And for those of you familiar with uh, Mac OS, that's when you tap the space bar, um, you'll get quick look if you're in Finder, for example, and you're looking at images. Um, my uh, iPhone is a little stuck there. This is the problem with beta software. There we go, quick look. Wonderful. I have a random Dropbox section in there, but I don't need that. Okay. So now this is my image, okay? This text block right here is my image. So I don't have to, you know, hunt for something in my photo library or whatever. No, 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 no. It decodes this and then it's going to show it to me every single time. Look at that, Micah. Done. I hit play da, 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 da. and bam. That, that's it. It's showing right up on my screen. Um, and so then what I can do is I, I'm going to say this is keyboard image because otherwise I'm going to get very confused later. If I pop into this little three dots here, um, then I, I could pin it in my menu bar and everything. Um, I can add uh, some shortcuts options uh, to do that. Uh, but instead, sorry, I want the share sheet option. Add, oop, cancel. Uh, add to my home screen. And there we go. Now I can add this to my home screen. If I pop back to my home screen. Look, right here. Boom. I tap it. And there, I have my image. Done. Immediately shows and, it. Yeah. It immediately shows it. Now, I recommend including that convert image option and bringing down the file size of your image because the bigger the image is, the longer it's going to take to uh, decode it. Um, uh, and so that means it's going to take a longer time to you know, get it to show up. So the smaller the image is, the faster it will show. You will have to play around with the convert image option. I recommend not putting anything after it for a while and just playing around, drag the slider up and down and make sure that you can still read your glasses. Now hold your iPhone a meter away from you and make sure that you can still read your paths, okay? Because if you can't read it, then you're gonna have a problem. If it's written in Dr. Scroll, then nobody's gonna be able to read it, but make sure that you can read that image. Uh, so uh, make sure somehow it's possible to read the image. Uh, ideally, try out that OCR feature that you can use in images on iOS 15 when that comes out, see if that works. Uh, or if you're in the public beta, then give that a try right now. But uh, there we go. That's how you can base 64 encode and decode an image so that you can have an image a tap away on your home screen.